Appreciate us getting on the agenda to have a workshop with you guys and talk about a very important matter. We're excited about the opportunity to be able to, to work with the county on a project that I think will be a substantial, substantial savings for uh, the incorporated area. Well, let me interrupt you. Please try and get that microphone up as close as you can. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. It helps a person like me that can't hardly hear. Well, I've been talking so much in the past few days, my voice is kind of getting a little bit weak anyway. So. There you go. Thank you. So once again, we're excited to be here and, and have a workshop with you and look at the possibility of, of another venture where we can work together for the uh, betterment of our city and our county together. Uh, it was, I'm going to go back to the whole history. I think everybody's familiar with how we acquired some property for a potential fire station. Uh, we understood that the county was interested in a Hodgeville uh, location site for a fire station. We think that's a, a viable area, that area around Blue Jay and Hodgeville, that a fire station that would be very advantageous uh, for our county. There are hundreds of homes and lots in that area, not all in our district, uh, some in the uh, county district, but by having a station where we're going to propose in just a minute, and what I've given to you several weeks ago, uh, we're going to look at as well. Uh, You'll see that we can lower the ISO for not only our fire district, but for the county's fire district through the auto aid. And uh, with very little change to anything, if you don't want to change, but it gets some immediate results. Um, let me run through the advantages uh, of having a fire station at Blue Jay with you that I listed down for your staff and for you to look at. And they'll have some other comments and and maybe some advantages and disadvantages because that's what we'll look at and see what is the best uh, decision for the county to see together. There's some ISO advantages, first of all, that we see and coverage advantages for the county. Uh, the city of Rankin has recently, as you know, acquired a 4-4 ISO. Uh, with the addition of the Blue Jay Station and additional payroll of two people that we're requesting in this proposal I'm showing today, a large portion of the county residents that is in the city's fire district that is currently a 10 would now be a 4, just like that. Uh, Mr. Reggie, you can appreciate that. That portion, most of it, I think, is in your district. So that would be a great uh, blessing to your constituents to uh, be able to give them that rating. And we'll look at the cost of that in just a minute, but it would be a great advantage to that area. This will provide substantial savings to residents in the unincorporated area. Uh, in the form of insurance reductions. I brought a little study here today that I'll leave with you, and Paul Delkins here, who is an insurance agent, they can also give some testimony. You may have some of your own personal testimony what's happening as people are renewing their premiums starting October 1st, uh, whereas there might have been rate increases that insurance agencies were seeing because everything's going up, uh, 15, 18%. They're seeing increases of 4 and 5 percent, seeing about a 10 percent reduction on the average in insurance premiums. Um, and that's going from, say, a 5 to a 4. As Paul can share with you, there have been um, some evidence of some much more substantial reductions if you go from a 10 or a 9 to a 4. I did bring the independent study that I'll leave with you of another area that's not our area where they went from a 5 to a 3. And uh, of course, the 3 is more of what I understand. And, Fire this. <clears throat> it's more for the commercial area. It will not affect your residential rates. So if you get to a three, what you're doing is you're 
really improving your industrial and your commercial uh, premiums, but you won't improve your residential premiums by going to a three. But you know, that's one of our goals is to get to a three to improve our commercial industrial areas that we serve. But the five to a four, this independent study will show you it's about a 9% decrease in the rate uh, annually in insurance premium. So if someone had a $1,000 insurance bill, they could expect $90 to $100 decrease in their premium, a great benefit that the county can give back to their citizens by obtaining this ISO afford. The second advantage there is by uh, expanding the city's fire district, which you would not have to do, it's just an option. Uh, if you were to consider expanding the Rinkins Fire District as part of this fire station agreement on Blue Jay, the county could improve properties within five miles of the current um, uh, 10-9 ISO to improve to a rating of four uh, with the Rinkins Fire District. Or you could be all the way, the county could improve the same area to their 4-9 that you now have. You understand what I'm saying there? The county has a 4-9, but there's no station in this area through all the way and through that appropriate application with ISO because we have been for auto aid, then you could immediately, uh, even if you didn't change the district lines, you could go to a 4-9 in a large area that would affect, I think, Vera's area as well. Uh, and that would be a great, obviously, blessing to the residents in that area. Let me object just a second. Not, not immediately. It's going to take about three months. It wouldn't be immediately if we knew the auto aid. Corey Rowan, Fire Chief. Sorry about that. Mr. Wesley said immediately it'll take about three months to get the ISO paperwork done to get the uh, auto aid agreement. We've already got an auto aid agreement with the um, House Bill 489 Service Delivery Strategy, but in order to get it in effect, we've got to start. We're do, doing the quarterly training now, but it has not been submitted to ISO. And so to get it done, this will take approximately three months if we do the auto aid route. But it would definitely be approved. It's just like a matter of formality. Yes. I still think it's immediate because it'll take us nine days to go to the station. Right. That's 8B. It'll take us nine days to get the station. Right. So it would work out there time wise. Okay. <coughs> Um, number three, the Blue Jay Station is an excellent location. Um, we, we would contend it's, it's probably one of the more ideal locations uh, because it's, it's 4.8 miles from the City of Rankin Station number one. Uh, to place the station on Hodgeville or further up on Blue Jay, if there was consideration that, you would not get the benefit of the ISO of four because the stations would no longer be within five miles of proximity of each other. So, for example, Mr. Ranger, for your area to get the four, it's got to be within five miles of a station that already connects there, which will be our station number one. Um, even many of the residents in the unincorporated area who live within five miles of the Hodgeville station would not be within a thousand feet of a hydrant. That's an important note. In the very southern end of the county, um, where the hospital station may provide a reach that we could not reach, uh, they would not be within a thousand feet of a hydrant, so we would not have much impact there. But in those areas where you have water sources like ponds and other water sources that are available, um, even if you had a, a resident in our five mile area that didn't have hydrants because of our hose lake, I think maybe the only one in the southeast that has a hose lake. Um, we can give them an ISO of four. So that's a great advantage as well that you could not provide uh, necessarily with the 49 that the county has. Once again, you can still stay with the 49 uh, and keep the district lines where they were if you so choose. The CBJ station would eliminate the uh, 8B classification ISO rating for all properties within five miles, improving their properties to an ISO of four. Number four, an advantage would, uh, would be there does not appear to be any lost coverage. Uh, after working with our staff, we'll, we'll see more information than today, I guess. But there doesn't appear to be any lost coverage by choosing Blue Jay Station uh, with Rankin over a Hodgeville location. Uh, both coverage and protection 
in our estimation, appears to improve. Okay? There was a questionable area, I think, in your area of the cell. What was that called? Okay, about 79 homes or something. Uh, we submitted a letter to your administration, I think, I'm, I think when you may have said, I'm not sure, but it, where we had a uh, DOT um, certified odometer registered that is 4.8 miles, so we, we know that that will be covered. Um, and then the other area that was in question doesn't have a water source, doesn't have a, a water out there, so the hospital station, you know, might be within five miles, it wouldn't provide protection because it's not, it's not a water source. Okay, so it doesn't appear to be any loss of coverage choosing a Blue Jay location or a hospital location. <clears throat> and then five, the city of Rankin would prove provide an EMS station. Uh, one thing that Toss had mentioned to us, and when I think came, maybe you had mentioned y'all thought about an EMS station uh, somewhere in that area uh, that would provide better coverage to the north side of Rankin and the McCall. Um, Hodgeville area, those homes out there, particularly if the Goshen stations on call somewhere, we kind of left them no man's land out there. So we would love to see a, uh, an EMS station on the north side of Rankin area, and at this station that we have, we can provide that for the county. Uh, the structure, we're not charged for the building right now, we work our IS, we work our service delivery. So other than the utilities, which we pay a percentage of the fire calls or whatever you decide from that, you would uh, be getting the EMS station without having to add that additional cost to your budget as well. So that's an advantage for the county. And we'd love to have the EMS on that side of the county. Advantages financially, once, if you would flip over a couple pages, and we'll come back and read these advantages, these advantages and summarize them. Let's flip back over. The first couple of pages, <clears throat> I won't go through all the detail there, it's similar to a format that you've seen before when we submit our annual budgets to you. But let me get you go to the third page of financial information where it says, City of Rankin Fire Department projected savings for the county by choosing to contract with Rankin at Blue Jay versus the county building and manning the hospital station. Are you on that page? Where my coat? Hope you don't mind me having a freshman in the club right here. Church. It's the third page of financial information. It says uh, by choosing contract with Lincoln versus at BJ. Okay. At the top, the proposed contract uh, that we are proposing would be a five hundred and eleven thousand seven hundred dollars. Uh, for that amount of money, the county would get another fire station and we would add two personnel to the current operation. We have five firefighters who will be going to seven. It'll be two 24-hour guys and one day guy. And what immediately this will produce is greater service because at night when we have one 24-hour guy, we'll have two that will be able to run, including the volunteers who come. So a quicker response to each fire with more engines. The current cost to the county is three sixty six nine fifteen. If you didn't change anything, if we went home today and said, "Hey, we just can't get on the same page. I'm sorry, I listened to everything, but we're just not there," then the contract would be three sixteen, three sixty six nine fifteen, and uh, we would have our five, our five firefighters, our same um, three stations that we do now. That's what it would be. So when you compare those two numbers. You find that additional cost for the county to have the fire station, the additional personnel, and get the better ISO on an annual basis would be $144,075. What, what, what's the present contract now, Wilson? The 2013 contract. The one we just did was three fifty-eight. Was the three fifty-eight? That was the actual final number. Mm -hmm. But the 366 is more reflective, and I'll tell you, tell you why. Because at the end of the year, but I can't bill you for this, at the end of the year, on the payroll, we have 27 periods in the 2012, 2012 payroll. It's a small number. 
But the actual number is about 366. It will be the actual cost if you put 13 and 14 together. Okay. I hope that made a little bit of sense to you. It's a difference. Yeah, it's a little bit of difference, but it's one payroll that that we. It's in the 2012 numbers. Okay. She had 26 pay. We pay every two weeks with them. She had 26 payrolls because my saw said, well, "How can that be different?" We had 27 in, in the previous year. And that makes us with one less. Okay. So, <clears throat> so they want to give you a number that I knew what wouldn't be accurate. 366 will be what you can expect on an annual basis if you don't do any change. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what you have then is 144,000. Let's just say 145,000 that see a Lincoln will request in addition to the contract you're now paying to get another station and to get the increased personnel and a better ISO. So we want to compare that to what it would cost the county if you went out and did the Hodgeville station. That's the approach that I took. When I looked at the numbers that uh, your staff had provided, uh, and I think you've seen these numbers maybe in your short-term work programs or whatever, it was estimated $400,000 the county would spend. And I've got two projections there, one what Rinky says it would cost, one that says what the county would say it would cost. Um, but the county had said it would cost them $400,000 to Secure station, the infrastructure, the pavement, the rooms, the kitchen, all that. You, you spend at least $400,000 for a building. And then you would have to have engines and equipment in that building. And if you bought used engines and equipment, you could do it for around $350,000, would be your hope. Could come in more, could come in less, but that was a, a fair number, and we agree with that number. <clears throat> Then you got to have personnel, and if you uh, want to have a manned station, um, your, the county staff says it would take them $1.6 over 10 years, or $162,000 a year, to put a 24-hour man in that station. $162,000 a year, or for 10 years, $1.6 million. The operating cost would be for that building about $60,000 a year. We agreed that's what we came up with. That's what we find our cost are to be. That's your fuel for your engines, your insurance for your engines, your utilities, your internet, all the things, that, office supplies, all the things that goes into uh, having an office or a place of operation. So it's 60,000 a year times 10 is $609,000. So the bottom line is what, what I believe the county would spend in the next 10 years would be $2,982,000. If, if we did not work with Rinkin, but you decided to go forward and build another station in Hodgeville, you can count on spending, in the next 10 years, count on spending about $3 million. Well, if you annualize that cost over 10 years, you would probably, it, it average out to two ninety eight dollars a year, if you annualize it over 10 years. Um, the cost increase that we're proposing is $144,075. So your annual cost savings would be $153,497. Or stating it more simply, you would spend $3 million in the next 10 years, or you could save um, $1.53 million of that and let us do the Hodgeville Station and service that area for you. And it would be a savings to the county of $1.5 million. Do you follow the math at least? Okay, so let's go back to the, to the advantages again. I've got financial advantages. Let me kind of summarize what that document said. The county would say with the initial capital outlay estimated at $750,000. So whether you used squashed money or whether you used um, fire fees, wherever the money came from, immediately you would not have to spend that 750. dollars Even if you weren't looking to do this project, next year, but maybe two years from now, you can still, in the next two years, put 750 back into your harpers to invest elsewhere. In addition to that, if you pull the capital out and just look at operating alone, the 144,075 that the city is uh, suggesting would be our need to operate this site um, is still less than what your, your payroll would be, not counting your operation costs. Your total operating cost, including some personnel savings, would be about $78,000 less than what the county would operate it for. And the reason you're able to save this money is because it's a type of consolidation. We're working together, spraying the cost of our fire station 
over four stations versus three. So it's working together, it's saving dollars for the county and uh, giving a higher service, allowing us to give a higher service to our city at a very low cost by working with you on this. So the estimated savings to the county is over 10 years would be 1.5 million. And this financial savings, of course, could be used as resources to fund other fire stations that I know you are interested in building. And that'd be a pretty good chunk toward meeting those other obligations and needs in the county. Whether it's more personnel in other fire stations or whether it's other fire buildings, you have 1.5 million in the next 10 years to work with that you would not have without contracting with us. There's an advantage of service I just want to point out that could easily be overlooked. The increase in staff with the added station will provide a comparable personnel in the Rankin Fire District with the County Fire District. Um, looking at the county's uh, personnel in the fire station, it appears you have 21 full-time staff um, for 10 stations, which is 2.1 person per station. I know some are manned, some are unmanned. That's just an average per station. In Rankin's Fire District, we have full five full-time staff, which is three sta for three stations, which is 1.67 per station. And with the fourth station, adding two personnel, which will give us a, a more engines on the, on the scene and, and a quicker response as it will have people in different areas closer to those fires that may uh, transpire, then we would increase to 1.75 persons per station, which gives us a little bit of coverage, higher service for the fire district of the county and our own. So we, we're excited about that. And uh, I think one of the advantages the Blue Jay Station could be operational within 120 days uh, of the county approval, where the other station, you know, either whether it's finances or timing or budgeting or bidding or process design, could, it could be a year or two. We're ready to go with it if you're ready to go with us and provide it immediately so that next uh, time your constituents in the unincorporated area get their insurance premium, they get. I notice like some of you are getting now, a 10% reduction, uh, put that money back in their pockets. And that's always good for our community. And that's um, basically the, the summary of the savings and the advantages. I will add that <clears throat> as we look at the area um, of all the subdivisions on Blue Jay Road, down Hodgeville, uh, there are between buildable lots ready to build and properties that are there now, there are hundreds of such properties. And the station of Blue Jay would cover all these. And I'm gonna guess it's around 700, we count about 500 or something today with our fire departments we're looking at what's in there. So they're not all homes yet, but we all are sitting here today hoping that as we provide better fire, uh, better services to our, our constituents in our, in our cities and our counties, and people see what a wonderful place Effingham is to live, they're gonna build and we'll be ready to give them that, that quality fire. Matter of fact, they, as they look at, they should be looking at, if there are nine or 10, they're gonna have a, as I do, I have my, my insurance bill, because I'm in an area that doesn't have a four or five, it's a nine or 10. It's like $2,500 in my little house, okay? People with the same size house can have a, a thousand, fifteen year old bill. So it's just a difference in a, in a nine and a four. So that, keep that in mind as you look at it the benefit for your constituents as well. I can answer any questions or try and maybe you might toss and your staff, see what they're looking at as well, and then come back and get all the questions together. Well, I think it'd be fair to say that this is a good thing for me. There's no one to entertain doing it. So that's, that's by that's, that's, that's a fact. Absolutely, good. what's good for us we do have some increased costs, as a matter of fact. Right. So the next thing is, I think that you have put together a, a set of numbers here and everything that shows that it's good for the county. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think um, in the essence of time, maybe the best thing to do is to ask, number one, our staff, have y'all reviewed these numbers and agreed with these numbers? Are they, are they accurate? Yes. Oh. I do believe they are, uh, as far as operations and so forth. The, the only thing that I would point out here with all the numbers, there's more than one way of looking at them. Obviously, this particular scenario involves 
the, the comparisons of the cost of the savings of the county contemplates uh, staying in the contract with the other two stations in the addition of a third station. In, in all fairness, and I'll say this off the bat, I'm not advocating that this is what we do, but in all fairness to review this, we, we also looked at what the numbers would look like if the county were to operate everything outside of the municipal boundary of the city. And basically the reason for, for me of doing that was we went from a $358,000 contract to a $511,000 contract. And the overall budget the county operates on is about one and a half million. So as we approach a third of our overall budget, it, it seemed like it made me a prudent thing to look at. Uh, and in doing so, um, roughly we come up with about 555 to operate those three stations. Now that's taken purchasing 275, uh, constructing a hydro station, putting apparatus in all three, personnel and operating, which is still above the 511 that's in the contract uh, that Wesley has proposed here. It'd be a $43,000 a year saving, or if we're going to go over 10 years, 433. Uh, there are obvious disadvantages in doing so, uh, which the persons outside of the city in the unincorporated area would suffer from ISO ratings if we did that. There may be some benefits long term of getting more staff, uh, more engines, more apparatus on our actual payroll that we share through our rosters. But but overall, I think it's probably more of a net loss just because of the overall ISO ratings that move. And I say all that to say, yes, I agree with the numbers, but they're all more than one way of looking at this also, where it would not be as big of a savings. But the you know, there's two sides financial operation. So by Financially, it may benefit us to operate all three. I don't know that operationally it, it, it would necessarily do that. Okay. Um, and Wesley, you being a CPA, I think you'll understand. You, you may or may not agree. There's always different ways to look at numbers. It all depends on the way that you do it. But the question that I had to toss, and I think if I'm not putting words in your mouth, you have looked at it from the worst case scenario and it's still a savings to this county of at least $43,000 per year to do this. I believe it will be some savings. Yes, but again, that's taking three fifty dollars for an engine. We got it for three twenty five. dollars you know, There's variables in it, but it still it would be very close. Okay. But it's still a savings? It would appear to be, yes, sir. Okay. Because I'm a number of person, but you got to present them to me, and I, 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 I have to weigh them out. But think, either way, it sounds like it's a savings. I think the correlation is on the additional sheet that you'll see um, as you start to get to the 11 by 17. It was our revision of that, but I believe that what Wesley's saying is correct. Okay. If you take our cost, we figured it would be about 259000 to operate large still. You take half of that, that's 129,000. There are increases about 144, 136, depending on what percentage of calls you use. Um, so at this point, we do believe that it would operate at least at our cost, if not less. All right, so we're, we're, we're still talking about giving the citizens of the county equal or better service, equal or better ratings, at a lower cost. I think it will be absolutely correct today. Again, the, the thing we wanted to look at was we also forecasted in, into the future as best we could with um, Pine Ward and Tuscal coming up to the front line coach, too. Um, but with those stations coming up, what that would do with the budget. And I think basically where we're at is yesterday it, it is a savings. However, if there's many more increases, it's quickly becoming to a point that it would not be as beneficial. So all that to me just seems to indicate that we need to have more conversations you know, internally together how we can better do this or how we can uh, alter it. Now I see a lot of other people in here so I, I'm trying to in the essence of time get to the bottom line of this thing. Is there anybody else here that, that, that right now this minute what, what I'm trying to get to is what's negative about doing this. And if somebody else can tell me 
I mean, the city has made it clear, and, and I mean, rightfully so, this is a good thing for the city of Rankin. I think everybody will agree with that. So what we've got to look at from the county is, is it good for the county? And that's what I'm trying to get at. From the number side, right now today, it's a savings, and it's, it, it's a positive thing for the county. I'm looking for anybody to show me anything negative. Great. Yes, sir. Um, I'm the interim fire chief for the county. Mm -hmm. And I think initially we need to look at the placement of their proposed station. It is, uh, I think there's some discrepancies in the, where the five miles runs out. Okay. And it's not going to cover every resident. You're going to have subdivisions that are split, leaving roughly 79 homes as a class 10. All right, but would it be true that if it would put at the Hodgeville location, there would also covered. be some? No, sir. It would not? No, sir. You think Hodgeville? The one I'm referring to actually sits right outside the subdivision. No, I, I think we would actually, would there be uncovered homes, not the subdivision? Well, yes, there would be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So at this site at Blue Jay, there are some that possibly are not covered? Yes. Okay. But if we put it at Hodgeville, there's going to be some that's not covered? Yes. But I do believe that Hodgeville would benefit more. Okay. And for, the, for the record, I'm sorry, um, but for the record, I think we looked and sat down and saw that a location further down Blue Jay, um, further down and out from Rankin, might actually be a better coverage. And, and I'm working my way to that. Yeah, yeah Mr. Chairman, the map that's up here now is, is the five mile coverage. And y'all have all these hard copy in front of you, too. The, Yellowish colored big blob is the five miles um, from I'm trying to look both ways to do it from the station, which is right here. So this is the five mile boundary where Mr. Burnson referred to is the back of Belmont Glen, where there's 79 homes in the back that the five miles does not run out to. This is the letter that uh, Mr. Corbett referred to earlier that Mr. Starling had written saying that he had written with a DOD certified dollar 4.8 miles to the back of the subdivision. That's what this person referred to as discrepancy. Um, overall, what we did is we went and counted. We drilled down to the aerials, and I believe it's on OA aerials. So they're on OA, it's in all fairness, because we don't have 13s yet when we did this. Um, there were 100 houses not covered if the Hodgeville station was built. There were 154 in the Blue Jay station is built. 79 of those are in here. So obviously if those 79 were counted, there'd be 75 versus 100. <coughs> so those are the numbers we can't let it be narrowed down. Let's address the, you Sure. Let's address the 75, the 75, you told me yesterday they didn't have any water source. Not all of them. These, are, these are part of them here. Mall, and, uh, Mall Saloon is for a run and there is no water source. That's correct. Right, so, Watch for 75 is a non issue because well, whether he has it, it's not going to help your ass. Well, you're right because these right here don't have a rule out. This is the other area that could Correct. not be covered. So that's why I said in my, in my analysis the 154 you've addressed it, the 4.8 will cover the area that we're concerned about, and the 75 is a non issue for either one because there's no water source. Okay. And this is logically. I got a question for you. If this is an area that's not covered by the water source. Fire chief should be all right. The county's trying to get everybody within five miles of the station, right? Yes, sir. All right, y'all four four point eight miles from Rankin. So yes, sir. You'll be, you'll be overlapping that. So why don't you go another four or five miles, and you still cover you you cover more area with the same fire station? Because the key is is keeping each st station from five miles from door to door to keep your roster to keep your personnel up. For ISO, you've got to have a minimum of 12 personnel on the scene. If you've got a roster, you move that station out five miles. So, for instance, if you've got a station 10 miles apart, so because it overlaps five miles, then you've got a certain, min min certain number of volunteers that you can pull from that area. You may have three volunteers, you may have no volunteers. You may have one, and then you've got one paid guy. The only way to make the rosters join, and that's what Rinkin's doing with all four stations, they've got to be within five miles of door to door for ISO. 
then you get the benefit of the personnel and volunteers for all four of our stations, which keeps the ISO 4 strong and healthy. Yeah, but we got a lot of places in the county. We don't have we we don't have them. We we don't even have a station within five miles of them. Right. I mean, so we so we we double we double we double protecting some people in the county, but the rest of them don't have anything. Well, not necessarily double protecting. You're you're trying to get a better ISO rate. Right? Well, well, I know we need to get the, we need to get the, everybody in the county have need to have a better eye. But you've got a large portion of this district that we're talking about, Hodgeville no. Road area. We, that's a we're 10 and get, a we're never gonna get through this. We're never gonna get through this if, no. if we if we get going too much. Well you no, know. I wanted to know that. I mean if we don't have time to do that, we just tell it all. I just wanted to know. Well the answer to the question whether we've got how many others are peers. I, I understand. Okay. Yeah. If this information is correct, and that's what I'm trying to verify, because it's been a, there's always when different groups are doing things, there's a lot of back and forth. And I did think that I understood yesterday that basically, uh, I think the point that was just brought out was not correct. That we should not be having any citizens that are in a, in a worse situation by doing this, but we will have several that are in a better situation. Yeah. And then, and then one of the points that would help a little bit of what Commissioner Lowe was talking about. Has, that's being addressed here is because we wouldn't have the initial capital outlay for this station, then we could use that capital outlay money for one of those other areas. But we don't, we're not going to spend $400,000 on a station to start with either. We that's that's we what have, was budgeted. We that's have, what, that's that's what the county had budgeted. So we spent one and a half a million in the rent. I understand. Y'all agree on that, correct? One point nine million in rent. The, the 400 came from the short term work program, and I think this one was higher than the normal 150, 200 we spent. It's because this one had sleeping wars in it for fire and EMS. It was more similar to Goshen, but not quite as large. So it was somewhere in between the two. But not having this initial capital outlay would help us um, be able to start some of the other sessions. It, it could. Yeah. I mean, there was 1.9 million spent on that station at Goshen Road because of the lot that was built on it had to go two story. I don't really have three dice Yeah, we did that. Yeah. Well, that's a done deal, and I'm telling you, if y'all want to rehash the past, we're never going to get past this present right here. So I'm here to talk about this issue right here, not whether we spent money at Goshen we shouldn't have spent. Is there somebody else that's got something that would put a negative on the county by doing this? I can Say speak, uh, Captain David Orr from the Ebbing Air Fire. Uh, a couple of things that I think need to be brought to the attention to think about. Anything we do here with the Blue Jay Road Station as it is presently presented is not going to take away the fact that you still need a station to cover all of Belmont Glen once it's built out. So do you spend money now, regardless of how small it seems to be, just to turn around in a year or two and build a station on Hodgeville Road and then have to consider moving the Blue Jay Station? I commend the city of Rankin for what their thought process is here. They are absolutely correct. The station needs to be in this area. This is not the right location. Uh, when Mr. Crawley was here and the thoughts were, let's look at worst case scenario, what if we had to run this whole thing? I did a lot of map study. And to get the five miles door to door to door, you would want to go around the corner, back towards McCall Power and put a station. You would be five miles from the Goshen Extension Station to that station. You would also be five miles from Goshen Extension to the Hodgeville station, five miles from Hodgeville to Goshen Extension, which Chief Ron talked about connecting rosters. That's essential in the way we have to operate. We're all dependent on volunteers. We can't get away from it. The county doesn't have the money to hire, hire people. The cities don't have the money to hire people. So if we can connect a roster five miles door to door from stations, they all share one roster. If one station's got 20 and the other's got none, they all have 20. That's the benefit. But if we build a station or allow a station to come online in the wrong location, we're still looking at building two stations because eventually 
you do want to cover the people in the back of country estates. You still want to cover the people in the back of Belmont Glen. It's not fair to them. They pay taxes. They pay insurance. The money, from my understanding, has been earmarked for about five years to put a hospital station online. Why not go ahead and spend it? And then look at spending the money that we would potentially save for the Rincon Station and spend that and put it where it needs to be so that we cover all of these areas and it all becomes a moot point. I think that's what the commission needs to think about here. There's no question the station needs to go in this area. But I think we need to step back from this whole situation and decide, is this the best location and is this the best way to spend our money? Because it could just be throwing good money after bad. Okay, so your point is, is that you still con you contend this is not the best location? That's exactly right. I contend this is not the appropriate location for this station. Because of the back of Belmont Glen. Because correct? of the back of Belmont Glen, and if we're going to lose Squirrel Run, think about cost of homes. We can take and say each home is worth X amount of dollars. Well, that's all well and good in the accounting world if we can say they're all worth the same thing. But when we look at property values, a 10% decrease for someone with a $500,000 or a million dollar home is a lot more money than a 10% decrease for someone with a $100,000 home. It's just simple economics. Well, what is the ISO rating going on with? Front half is a class four, the back half is a class ten. Okay. That's so a four it's, ten. It's split right now. Yes, ma'am. It would look like this. This and what we're talking about is if we did this, seventy five houses at some point in development would still be a ten. Seventy nine. If you put the station there at Hodgeville Road where it was proposed, or even move it down towards Blue Jay, if that was possible. And as you see from the map, it's really not possible to move it very far because you want to link your stations. That, that would be our goal, is to link all of these stations, and then it doesn't really matter who runs what. That, that's a different point to so argue. if we built it in Hodgeville location proposed, would we be within the five miles door to door you, of Rankin Station? You would. And the, the, the main station of Rankin would sit right dead in the center of all of this. Looking further into the future, will the proposed Blue Jay site, Blue Jay McCall, would that be in the five mile range to um, the Ebenezer Station? No. The Ebenezer station, unless you move it, the 275 station is, it really needs to be the other side of 21, back down Ron Station Road. Uh, there's a map that I did for Mr. Crawley. Yeah. You got to go further up. The thing, and, and I understand what Mr. Ron, or Chief Ron said. If we had the money to build every station we needed, Lord, I could replace half the stations in this county. We would charge that, the, we'd be charging the citizens a lot more exactly. property tax that would more than offset their savings on ISO. Unfortunately, we're, we're in a position where we're having to deal with stations that have been in existence for a long time because it was so either I'm, already there. I'm looking to be careful up here. I mean, because obviously we can take this from one area and we can lower the ISO mm -hmm. because Rankin's got a great ISO rating right now. But I would want to have a 10 in the entire county and a three or four in an isolated area. If we can bring a larger area from a 10 to a six or whatever by, and I'm not an ISO, for, I don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about ISO rating what it takes to get there. But I'm just, my thought process is, I would, I would tend to, if, if it's basically not a huge difference one way or the other here in what it's gonna cost us to operate, um, then I would rather see a larger area, maybe not go to the three or four, um, and the site looks like, for me it looks like, the Hodgeville Station site area is good for the interconnectivity to the Goshen, and then a site somewhere up Blue Jay Road, or I mean McCall Road a little further north, would be the next logical five mile door to door. Yes, for that's exactly right. Thing. That, that is exactly right. If we could build a station up McCall Road, then what we're trying to do is network. You can only network one piece at a time. So, but I mean, we're talking in the future here. I, and I mean, now I think that, that, you know, the southern end. So how does this connect? If we built the Blue Jay site, does the Goshen site and the Station 8, does that meet the five mile frame? No, sir. Station 8 is outside of five miles door to door from the, the Goshen Road station. 
So, so again, that's saying but if that interconnectivity is so important for five miles before the door, then that's. Is there anybody that's got anything, but it goes to any other negatives besides placement? Dollar cents? Anything else other than placement? The placement's the main whole thing. Right. I just want to add one thing. It's a metal building. It's already there. It's cheap to get into for two to three years while y'all are building the Tusculum station and the Pine Oro station. And then when y'all get ready to build the Hodgeville station, which is the next station on y'all's list, I would assume, we can move the trucks out, build another building, and, and sell the lot, and be done with it. But in the, the exactly two to three years, that's exactly where I'm headed. Two to so. three years down the road, all, right. all these other people are taking the savings. All right. So, Wesley or Chief, whichever mm -hmm. wants to answer this, I'm, I'm, I don't understand all there is to understand about service delivery. And if this commission was to give you its blessings and y'all put this station in operation. What is the long-term county commitment? Would it be the same as what we presently have? Basically, the, we give you one year's notice and that's what I, I keep think, hearing. I don't think so. We want to try to you know, work within the framework of the service delivery contract. We've got so much time and energy. We may want to get together and, you know, we talk about looking and tweaking that for better for everybody. <clears throat> but talking with our attorney, and you got to get with the county attorney, if you saw the advantage, say over the next three years for sure, um, hopefully it'll be a longer time. Hopefully we'll find that the five mile radius continues to work. We don't have a lot invested, you won't have a lot invested, and it'll allow you to do some things you want to do. So if you did an intergovernmental agreement between the county and the city of Rinkin that did not impact, I think that's a key point, you would not want to impact the other districts, you know, the Springfield, the Guy, and so forth, it'd have to just affect our district, we said, all right, if you would do this station, say for three years, and then we'll look at it again in three years, this is what we'll pay in addition to, and he believes that would be legal, but he wants to get with your attorney if you want to make it contingent upon a legal agreement, not voiding our service delivery that we've worked for, you know what I'm saying? So that, that'd be the next step, I think, is, a, is an agreement to move forward, contingent upon a legal intergovernment agreement between the city and the county. So basically to alleviate certain concerns or whatever, we could enter into an agreement for three years or whatever, a period of time. Because like the chief says, you, you don't have a lot invested. Y'all are just needing to have a place to put an apparatus and get something so that you can work on the ISO rating. And you you bought a piece of property that you made a good deal on. We get the road changed and everything through there and we see how it's going and I at the end of whatever yeah. agreement we say hey this is working great or it's not you may find in three years you're not ready to build the station and so you still have given these folks this great iso <coughs> uh, and, and still helped you for sell financially um, we, we hurt nobody you hurt nobody yeah. and what we're doing for you talking about that i'm glad you're interested in how it benefits rate because it will benefit everybody it's going to cost our citizens about $75,000 to do this deal. But what we're going to get out of this, sorry about that. Right. I hear the time comes playing here. But what we're going to get out of that is additional personnel on the station solidifying a stronger ISO plus more response, better service to our citizens at a very low cost. We're going to try to cover that cost by increased fees. One of the things that was attractive to me was this particular station, uh, Hodgeville was not listed in service delivery. So, in my thinking, we should have been able to do some type of outside agreement that didn't hold us down to 10 years to where we, we could take a relook. You could do the other two that you want to do. And my question to finance, correct me if I'm wrong, there's not an operational in our budget at all for a Hodgeville station or anything right now. No, sir. That's why we, we did look at it overall as far as operating either three of those stations in Rincon or operating five, including. Tusculum and Pinora. Um, what we were concerned about at all was the increase in the cost. 
itself, whether or not that was going to be an operational cost or whether or not we could do something else fast, um, perhaps supply one of the engines or something. Uh, we felt like we were getting at the point where it was a break-even point um, between those cost factors. Uh, Wesley went back and refigured um, uh, some of the, their particular cost. I think if you look at what it would cost us to operate that station, we believe it would be about $259,000 a year, including um, the actual cost of the engines and the buildings and so forth. At this point, this particular difference would be simply even less than putting three personnel there. Okay. So operational is covered free? Uh, the operational will require a budget increase on our part. The difference is, is that, that it will not be as substantial as it could be if we chose to do it ourselves. Okay. So either way, we're going to have to look at a budget amendment to, to fund this thing within 140 days. No, sir. This is the, the July 1st, 2014-15 budget. Okay. Okay? So that's, you've got time to plan for that. Okay. Because we, we won't be in the station probably until uh, April, if, if it's all going. So okay. this will be the new budget year. So we're, we're still operating on a current budget year being 366 or whatever it's going to come we, this we, year. We'll get a few months free. <laughs> Actually, the, the budget we gave you for this year, and I gave back to uh, Mr. Crawley back in, I guess, January and February, where special cement was 309000 As you can see, I think it's going to come in 366, so we're going to meet that budget. We always hope we can meet our budgets. We try to budget higher. We'd rather uh, over-promise, under over-deliver than over-promise and under-deliver. Now, Wesley, one other question for you, if I may. Um, what was that about percentages the day that we met from lunch that day? It was a 65, 55 to 45. The, the, the contract now says that basically there's a budget and we pay the percentage of the calls that are in the corporate area, which is going to vary, going to vary from year to year to time, from time to time. And what Mr. Corbett had suggested that day was trying to come together on a fixed percentage that you can budget on. Okay. However, the issue with that is I think that would require modifying the service delivery agreement take all parties. I don't know that we can do that. And we need to, that's something that I think you mentioned I'd like to sit down because what Tulsa and I are looking at, if we budget say 60-40 and this year it comes in and the county's at 65, you're upset and we're happy. But if it comes in at 55, I gotta come up with another eighty thousand dollars and I'm sad. You're happy. It's a hard to it's a hard line item to budget. It would seem better if you want to come in together sometime after you decide this agreement and say, do we want to pick a number based on what we're covering? That, that guy in the Lincoln Spring Hall is comfortable with, and then we look at it every two or three years to see how growth has changed so that you can better plan your budget and you don't get caught. Because calls calls don't get caught. If there's an intergovernmental agreement separately, we don't even have to affect that. No, we wouldn't affect that. We would still operate on calls for the work that we're doing now, but we just increase that uh, three station operation to, let's say, have to work with the agreement, make sure it's legal, that it doesn't interfere with the other. Uh, parties involved, and then you look at it three years, see if the county's ready to move forward. You know, we, we don't know what's going to happen. This section of Belmont, one that, that is, has been discussed a few times, is it developed yet or is it still rolling? Both. The largely unoccupied lot, but it is developing. There are building houses there now. The, the ponds of the lots are undeveloped, but they're all building houses. I think it's a great building. Is that the area that doesn't have hydrants? No, that, that would be the squirrel run and lost loop. That's this area here. But that area is in dispute as to whether it's important. I mean, that's five. the uh, Belmont Glen area, which is our map showing not being covered in the five by <coughs> the odometer reading that Mr. Starling did says it's within five. So there's a discrepancy in what the fact is in the right. And, and that one would matter because those would go to the four because they're all within the thousand feet of the house. So what do we do to get their Tell you a couple of things that I understand about it. Um, if you approve it, then the ISO letter we have can be submitted to ISO and they'll change their computers based on that letter. And so, if say there was an issue with that, um, Paul might answer this better than I, but 
Apparently, insurance agents have a way of, if a GSI shows a certain distance, if they can certify that with the local fire department, they can send a letter and appeal it, and they can also get uh, support and help from ISO and get the four or five ordinance in that area. So we can go ahead and start, the office go ahead and start taking some. There are many ways to ensure that, because we know it's 4.8. That is not in question. You can get your odometer and you can check it tomorrow, and it's 4.8. That's the same, I think, Paul, you, you might correct me, but if, if a, if a big flood map shows that these properties in flood, but you can go get a surveyor to certify that it's Correct. You get a certification and that overrides the, the big picture, correct? It might be across the aisle, but yes. it'll still change. I got you. Yeah. I got you. And so there's two All ways right. to do it. We're going to do it through the ISO and also if it falls and falls to the crack, you can still appeal. People can still get that ISO. So that should be a non-issue? In my opinion, it's, it's a non-issue. Is there any so question from any commissioner yes. that... Um, sure there is. With Station 8, with that, the, the issue, the, the section we're talking about, that scroll run and all, Station 8 would surely pick that up. What is station there was a Station 8 built down on the Little Sea Conway where it showed up on the map. What is, what is Station 8? Station 8 is this. That's the best exhibit. That's an existing station. And it terminates right here. According to what you have to do. Yes, this is this, this bluish line. That's what you can't see my favorite. This, this color here. Oh, we got you. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right. We're fixing to bring this thing to a close. You got that? You got your answer then? I'm sorry. Have you got something else? No, I, I was just going to step up. Uh, he looked at us about clarifying that about Squirrel Run. Right now, Station 8, as uh, Mr. Allen said, it only gets there to the intersection at Squirrel Run and Moss Loop. It, that's, that's not going to get It's not going to get to the back. The bottom line is there's going to be pockets here and there. It's whether or not the commission is going to want to move forward on doing this right now on a limited basis for a limited period of time that we'll do something quicker no nothing no loss to the county but it but um, will profit the citizens of the county. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry I know we're out of time but very quickly I yeah. just suggestions from staff. If the board wants to consider moving forward with this proposal, just suggestions from staff, I would say that number one we need to verify that we can excuse me enter into a separate agreement for just this station. <clears throat> we sort of call it um Number two, that, that it does improve the ISO ratings. We make sure that, that happens. There's also no real reason to do this. And then I would suggest, just from my perspective, <clears throat> that we back up in the interim while this station is operating. If we don't believe this is the right location, let's back up and, and reevaluate the entire county, so to speak, possibly with an outside consultant from ISO that can help us <clears throat> excuse me, position these stations. And there's some like the station eight that you were just referring to, there's, uh, uh, Commissioner Mason, that is one that's on our short term work program also to have repairs because the engine's overly fit in. So if we had to abandon that and move it a mile, it's probably not that bad. So I think there are some opportunities to do that. Some obviously we don't want to move. Uh, so I would just suggest we don't enter into this agreement and walk away from it, forget about it, but we begin planning for the future as to how we can. Whether this is or isn't the best location, and then possibly it could be moved because there's low cost there. You're, you're not saying hold this agreement up, but if, if we were able to do this agreement, then start planning as an entirety. And yes, actually, and it's actually during the term together. of this agreement, whether that's a year, two years, three years, whatever that term is, during that term, right. let's begin planning rather than just sitting right. and proactively look at where these stations need to be. Right. And it may be that at the end of that, let's call it a three year term. We determined they're not in the right location, and at which time we would not renew it, we would put whoever operates it, put well, it in the correct location. One thing I want to say is to, to me, a huge benefit that I see is when, when we can figure out how to save the citizens um, money any which way that we can save them money, and we can all work together and we can start planning so that we're not overlapping. When we're planning together, we're not planning by ourselves, and you're planning by yourself, and we're trying to make it all fit. That's that's not as good as if we're looking at it comprehensively in the beginning. So I think that's, that's a positive step. Uh, I make no pretense of thinking that I think as a county, if we could come to some type of consolidated fire and fire service, we, we would all gain. But this right here, as long as the city is, is willing to enter into an agreement, if the attorneys can work that out where it's legal to do so, and it doesn't bind this county for a long period of time, I agree with that 
we need to be proactive, get everybody in a room, get a table, get somebody, and let's start mapping this whole county out. And the city of Rankin, by the time that's done, may totally agree, no, we need to move it down the street. And um, they've admitted that they've gotten a good deal to get a piece of property. They're not going to have a lot invested in it. They've got everything to gain by getting the ISO rating. I think the county's got a lot to, to gain. It does not cost us anything. Our staff has um, certified to me that the numbers um, are a win on that side. So I would ask any commissioner if there's any other uh, information that they need for staff to obtain uh, in order to make a decision going forward that you can let that be known now and then we'll get that information provided so that we can make a decision on, on this in the short term. Here, what type of time, time frame do you think that you go to get us an answer on being able to do a separate agreement in our own agreement? I looked at the um, search delivery agreement. I, I believe you can do a separate agreement. I think the only thing that has to come back as part of search delivery is that if the response area map and the automatic aid area maps are changing, that piece of the project needs to go back and be approved by each of the city councils and the board commissioners. What about percentage basis for payment? Do you think we could lock in a fixed percentage or do you think that's part of service delivery would require the modification of everybody else? If you're talking about just for this station or are you yes. talking about? Just for well, both, both. Just for this station being a service not named and or the others. If it's just for this station, I think you can do it. That's it. But the other phone will remain the same. And I'd be glad to talk to you. That's a renegotiation. Mr. Dickey and I have not spoken about it, but I'll be glad to get to the start that kind of thing. Well, everyone are ranking citizens as a county citizen. So we can benefit those citizens we're helping county citizens. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions? Was any of the public wanted to, to speak on this? I'd just like to say one thing. You're not public, you're a council. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Paul Wendell from City Council from Rankin. Uh, Tulsa made the comment about studying to see what the county could take over our district for, and I think it was 550 or 555, something like that. The problem with that is that then you have three perimeter stations that only cover out. They don't cover the city of Rankin. So that's not necessarily the best bang for your buck. You want to as Mr. Mason said, you want to put a station where you can cover five miles all the way 360 around that station. And there's a lot of places in the county that need that to go from a 10 or a 9 or an 8B to something better than, I just think there's more cost in it than, than your calculation for what you get. What are you laughing at? Billy Dasher, I'm a 30 year veteran insurance agent and I'm not here about the Rankin uh, Blue Jay station. I want to know where on the priority list of the commissioners is the Northwest FEM uh, fire station and where is it, when is it going to be built? A lot of folks from Porter Road North have absolutely no fire protection and this represents a lot of people. It's a good chunk, uh, geographically speaking, of the county. Um, ever since Porter Road ever since Guyton Station closed. Uh, a lot of insurance companies are not aware that Guyton Station number two is closed. And we still got folks that uh, are shown with fire protection when they actually don't. And when the insurance companies figure it out, um, it's gonna be a day of reckoning. And you're gonna have a lot of mad folks up here. Um, I don't know about Paul, but I don't have any companies that write class 10. I can answer your question, Mr. Dasher. It was approved in a short-term work program. We're actually working on acquiring the property for it now. Yeah. We would expect to be under construction. The board basically approved it uh, for our next, well, not even next fiscal year, for now. Um, and we, the survey for the property, if the bid closes Monday. So as soon as we get it, we've already got the title work. We'll actually work on the acquisition of the property. And construction will start a couple months after that. We need to bid it on. So it, it, six months, maybe? To completion, maybe a little more because it, it's a metal building. Somewhere yeah. like that, yes. It's going to be a rural station, so yeah. it won't take a lot. Yeah. It's a metal building. Okay. That's right. I, I hope that's a priority for the commissioners, okay? Well, it, it's, it's in the world now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.
It is. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. All right. Anything else relevant to this? 